Chad Wright, this developer and your host. Today I'll be working with Herb. Herb had a stroke that affected the left side of his body and we're going to mostly focus on how to release a spastic hand. Uh, his hand tends to want to tighten up. Uh, it's like a protective response of the brain. So we're going to just work on how can we open that up. And so uh, I'm going to use several different techniques. I'm going to combination of myofascial release, cranial sacral therapy, um, some indirect ways of working with the body. Um, so just several different approaches I'm going to be using. I'm also going to be working what's called proximal to distal, which is not a big thing, but just basically working from the inside or the center of the body to the outward, the outward part of the body. So I'm going to start here at the uh, what's called the thoracic outlet, or basically just below his collarbones. And my other upper hand, my hand on his back is basically on the same height level. And I'm just kind of making a connection between my two hands. Just a light pressure between, started basically neutral or almost nothing. And then I press till I feel a connection. And then I just sort of follow it three dimensionally. Normally I would do this for about five minutes, several minutes, at least three minutes, but often several minutes. Um, I'm going to do a little shorter right now just for the purposes of this video, but this will help to release the, what's, what's outside from, from this part outward into the arm and hand. Uh, I'm going to then move down to his uh, shoulder blade, and I'm going to just kind of cuff my fingers that are on his back on the outside of his shoulder blade grab him his arm gently by the elbow and support his elbow and so it doesn't uh, don't drop it suddenly. It's important for a therapist to make sure that you're in a comfortable position too because if, if you're not comfortable it's not going to feel good to their body. It's kind of like two dancers dancing together. You have to have a, a seamless connection. So what I'm doing is I'm sinking into the back, the, the uh, shoulder blade area, just inside the collar or the uh, scapula, and I'm just letting, I'm sort of uh, leading, but I'm also following. I'm kind of asking his body, which which way do you go easily? I'm not trying to just uh, take it somewhere, and, and obviously we want to get range of motion with his shoulder but we don't want to force things. And also on his shoulder blade, what I'm doing is I'm, as I'm moving the arm, I'm uh, moving the shoulder blade with me. About one third of the movement of the arm comes from the shoulder blade. So helping that move, um, or going with that movement of the shoulder blade helps the arm to move. A lot of times when people have pain and dysfunction in their shoulder, the glenohumeral joint, a lot of times it comes from the shoulder blade itself because there's limited movement back there so we, the, the rotator cuff muscles have to kick in and work harder. So I always work with the intelligence of the body. I never force anything. And you know, this, uh, I should have said this in the beginning, but this is for educational purposes. So um, only use this if, uh, if, it's a, if it's recommended by your uh, healthcare provider. There's little knots on the shoulder blade. I'm just gently sinking into them. I'm not, I'm not digging it really hard, but I'm sinking into them until I feel them kind of resisting back, and then I just stay at that barrier. I follow it three dimensionally. I 
I'm going to come up and just work a little bit on the on the pecs. They're very tight here. That's also blocking part of the range of motion. Just doing a little bit of a squeezing above and below the pec major, a little bit into the pec minor. But I don't really think just in terms of muscles and how they connect from point A to point B. I think, how is this connected to that? What's making one part, what's the relationship between one part and another part? How does everything connect? I feel the tissue softening. All these things I would spend more time than I am doing right now, but and I probably will afterwards. But I'm just wanting to show how, to, how I work with, with the body. And I'm partly giving suggestions here with my with how I'm moving his arm, but I'm also letting his body lead the way. It's very easy and light. I'm not trying to make anything happen. It's like speaking a language. It's all about listening. Listening through your senses. I'm gonna give just a little pressure here into this. There's like a little groove right here right at this little junction of the shoulder when people dislocate the shoulder this is a spot where it tends to happen it's also a point where you can somewhat access the rotator cuff muscles and then if i'm going to the same i guess on the opposite side in the back i'm going to reach kind of through three-dimensionally with my thumb and i'm just going to give a little bit of support on both sides there as i'm taking the shoulder through a range of motion it just makes it a little bit easier to move. I'm not pushing in real hard. I'm just giving it support. He has a little bit of spasticity in the elbow. Right now, today's not much, but a lot of what we've already done has helped calm that down also. So we'll just check what the hand's doing. Actually, the hand is relatively relaxed. We could have checked in the beginning, but Today's is more of a relaxed day than, than oftentimes it's been. Uh, but what I, even now, there's still a little bit happening here. So, what I often do is instead of, and this will actually with anyone, if you try to take a, a, a tight fist on, on someone and make them hold their fist shut, if they try to hold their fist shut and you try to force it open, it's going to be very difficult to do. But instead of trying to force it open, what I try to, what I do is I, I just say, I just tune into the hand, start it neutral, meaning not doing anything. And I follow the tissue. I like, what's it doing? It's like you're listening to a child that's come up to you and it's upset, and the child's upset. Instead of just saying, well, well quit, quit being upset, you're like, oh, what's going on? That's what I'm doing with the hand. I'm saying, what's going on? What's, what's the tension about? And as I do that, it kind of tends to go around, and then it tends to go all the way in a circle. And each time around, it tends to be a little easier to open. The thumb, his thumb kind of wants to go out, so I'm going to just kind of exaggerate what's go what's doing. I'm not and this is going, go, going with it. I'm not trying to make anything happen. Just gently put my thumb on the back of the wrist. What does that feel like to you, Herb? Uh, no problem, it feels okay. So like if you take someone who's got a, a, a spastic hand, you just try to force it open, it's gonna be really uncomfortable. But if you do it, work with it like this, it's not gonna hurt.
is working with the body's intelligence. The body, his body is tensing up this way because it's a, it's a protective response. His nervous system is learned. So we have to respect that, we have to work with it, listen to it. I'm just going the direction of ease. I'm just letting it, letting it go, and going with it, supporting it. It's, he's getting pretty good range of motion now on his wrist. His fingers are pretty open. And you know, to teach this to someone um, who's had this experience is sometimes challenging too, because our minds just want to open it. It wants to say, oh, it should open, so let's just, just make it open. But you have to be with it. You have to say, okay, it's not wanting to open right now. What can I do to, to help it? And so I want to have you go ahead and try to inter interlace your fingers, Herb. Okay. Well, today it's working really well. <laughs> it doesn't always happen like that. Yeah. But uh, maybe we'll try it again. And, and, and um, can you see if you can get a little bit more range of motion in your fingers? Yeah. Well, today it worked out well, so <laughs> we don't have to. We don't have to show what we're going to show. Uh, so um, that's it. I think that's it for today. We're gonna we're gonna just wrap it up, and uh, I'm, I'll come back another time and, and show you some more stuff. But thanks for joining me today, and and. Uh, and continue to discover how everything is connected.